Good morning and welcome to Southern Today. I'm Jazz Allen and here at my left I have Clark Tangsley. And with finals just around the corner, you know, we have a lot of incoming freshmen coming in. They're trying to left, they're left wondering how to prepare for this. So today we've brought in several professionals, uh, a couple of students with a lot of opinions. And to try to better you for your finals, uh, to our left we have Josh. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Thank you, Jazz. <laughs> Landon, thank you for coming in today. Appreciate it. And you're the director of student services, correct? Uh, student activities. Student yep. activities. Yep. Explain to me a little bit about what you guys do in your office. Okay, our office has uh, three primary functions on campus. Um, the first, we, we work with all the student organizations uh, to make sure they're getting the information they need about you know, the processes that they have to take to market their clubs, to hold meetings, things like that. Um, second, you know, we, we serve as the primary advisor to our Greek organizations on campus. We have three fraternities and two sororities. Um, and then finally, our, our biggest function is uh, we plan, we basically appropriate that, that uh, student fee money for student activities throughout the semester. And so we plan a lot of events. Uh, we try to do a big variety of events, um, you know, and then also part of that are the, are the picnics that we have every year. Okay. Now you said that you guys do a lot of events. Can you explain to me some of the events that were really good this year? Yeah, you know, we had, we had a lot of success uh, with, with a couple of magicians that came to campus. Um, you know, we filled up Corey Auditorium on a couple of occasions for those, which we're really happy with. Um, we've had success running different movies throughout the semester. Uh, the outdoor movies at the beginning of the semester were really popular. Um, and, you know, we'd have, you know, 75 to 100 people come for those. Uh, we've had, you know, a lot of success, too, with, with some of novelty type events. Um, Stuff a Lion, we, we actually said we were going to start at 1030, and by about 1020 that morning, uh, there was a line stretching from the bookstore out the lion's den door waiting for us to start that. And so within about half an hour, we were out of the materials to Stuff Lions. So um, we've, had, we've had a lot of events that were really successful, and we're excited about some stuff we're looking at for the spring. Okay. Um, as far as in the spring, I, normally the weather's, you know, pretty cold to start mm -hmm. off. What do you guys do to take care of that? You know, with the spring, it's, it's kind of a different focus. I know in the past, the weather has forced us to cancel some events. Um, but what we're, what we're going to do is we're going to go, go hard about the things that we can control. So we're going to come up with a nice balanced schedule. You know, we've got a lot of movies spread over the course of the semester. Um, we've taken our different entertainment type acts and we've spread those out over the course of the semester as well um, to try to help ourselves. So if one week there happens to be a snowstorm or a blizzard or something like happened a few years ago, uh, we don't have multiple major acts that week that we then have to cancel and rebook. Um, so we really tried to balance out the calendar to where, you know, every week we're having three, four different events going on for students. Now, what would be uh, an example of an event that you guys thought would go over really well and just didn't catch on or... Yeah, you know, that's a good question, Josh. Um, it, it, we've, we've had a lot of success this semester with some different things. Uh, we haven't really had any that have bombed. Um, I know in the past sometimes I think, you know, some events, um, for whatever reason, they didn't catch on like they thought they would. I've, you know, I've heard stories that, you know, our office has done like a video game tournament before and um, for whatever reason, just no one, no one showed up. You know, it was a good idea and they worked hard to promote it and everything, but Sometimes it just doesn't click, and you never know. Occasionally, um, the same night you've got an event planned, you know, there's an Italy semester event, and then sure. over in Taylor, you know, the theater department's got an event. So sometimes there's just some natural overlap, even though I think all the departments do the best they can to, to not let that happen. It just happens on occasion. Now, Jazz mentioned that finals are coming up. What do you guys mm -hmm. do for your office and some things that you guys are promoting for that? Yeah, so... Um, for 13 years, we've done a spring finals madness, and so um, our campus activities board this semester wanted to do a version of that for the fall. Um, and so we're trying to put that together. You know, enrollment was up, which always helps our budget since we're entirely student fee driven. And so that gave us a little more leeway to add a fall finals madness this year. So we're really excited about it. Um, we're kind of just in the process of announcing some things, but basically. Um, on December 4th, Wednesday, from about 5 to 8, we're going to have inflatables set up in the Recreation Center. Intramural Sports will be hosting a three-on-three -three basketball tournament at that time. I know um, Wellness is doing a Zumba class. Um, all, all sorts of different, different stuff will be going on that night. And then at about 8 o'clock, we'll wrap it up. We'll do a movie 
everyone can relax, watch the movie, and then head out. So, you know, we'll have free t-shirts we're giving away that night, free food, karaoke, open mic, inflatables, all sorts of fun stuff. Now, what movie are you guys showing? Well, we just did a Facebook vote between uh, Rush, uh, directed by Ron Howard, and um, The Family with Robert De Niro. Um, I haven't tallied those results yet, but it'll be one of those two films. I think Rush is going to wind up being the film that we show. All right, excellent. Anything else you'd like to add about what's going on with your guys? No, I just season? thank you so much for having me today. If, right. if you're interested in uh, being involved in the programming, um, feel free to join our campus activities board. It's just a group of students that basically they're the ones who give that input on what to do with that student. And feedback. where would they go to do that? Um, you can come by the student activities office. We can give more information on that. Or, um, you know, we meet Wednesdays at 3 o'clock, usually in room 309 of Billingsley or room 356. All right. Well, I appreciate so, you coming All right. Lane. Thank you so much, Josh. Dustin, we're headed to you with the weather. Thanks guys, I'm Dustin Doyle and we're here with Southern Today. We're going to take a look at the forecast outlook. Here is the national weather outlook. The Doppler radar is showing slight precipitation over here on the west coast, uh, which is a little on the warm side, wet and warm. That's how I like it guys. Over here on the east coast, it is actually going to be a little cooler, which is actually not too bad. Now, moving on to our local forecast. We are actually in beautiful downtown Joplin. We're seeing mid temperatures in the low 50s with chance of sunshine all day long. <sighs> Temperature for tonight is gonna be about 30 degrees. Uh, five mile an hour winds uh, from the northwest. Let's uh, bundle up and let's try to stay warm. Weather on campus. Right now it's sunny in the low 50s, sunshine all day long. Normal temperatures for this time of year, so we can't really blame it on global warming right now. Let's take a look at campus seven day forecast. There's our seven day campus forecast. It's five, 10 mile an hour winds on Monday. Highs are gonna be in the 55s. Tuesday's gonna be about the same. 55, five to 10 mile an hour winds. Rolling on into Wednesday, it's gonna jump up just a little bit. It'll be 60 degrees, five, 10 mile an hour winds. On in a hump day, it is 69 degrees. That's my favorite number. Rolling on into Friday, it's 69 again. Five, 10 mile an hour winds, still plenty of sunshine all week long. Let's take a look at the weekend. It's actually gonna move up to 73 degrees. That is gonna be a really nice weekend. Lows are gonna be in the 30s. Full moon is gonna be all week long. Let's go ahead and move into our morning commute to campus. This is the type of weather you're going to see when you go take your finals. Slight chance of fog, which can lead to traffic delays and around campus. So let's get there early. Sun up is scheduled to be at 715. Remember, guys, this is the type of weather that you're going to experience for final week. Remember, finals are here, so have no fear. Bring your brains, your books, and most importantly, bring your sunblock, because there's going to be plenty of sunshine all week long. All right, this has been Dustin Doyle with uh, Southern Today Campus Forecast. Back to the studio. Thanks, Dustin, for the weather update. Here this morning we have Mary Duncan, a student senator. And basically we're just going to take some time to get to know her. Thanks for coming on. The Thanks studio. for having me. So can you tell us, start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I will be graduating this May. I'm a senior, and um, I'm a or a political science minor and a public relations minor and um, I, I have, I'm involved with a bunch of different extracurriculars like mock trial and a bunch of different others. Okay, so now how long have you been a student senator? Um, this will be my, I'm on my third semester so my, this will be my second year. Okay, and what was the process that it takes to become a student senator? Do you have to run a campaign? Or yes, um, there's a bunch of different ones. Like you can you can do a vacancy, and basically you submit an application, and then our vacancy board will review the applicant, and if you're voted in, then you become a senator. Otherwise, like you can do a freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior application, where you have to get a, a petition of 50 signatures, and then you campaign. Now, as far as a little bit how student center is student senate is structured. Um, could you just kind of explain a little bit about that and maybe your specific roles in student senate? Sure. Um, there's about 24 senators on, a, on the board at one time 
and there's um, different executive levels. Like we have a president, we have a vice president, we have a secretary, we have a treasurer. The treasurer also serves as the head of the finance committee, which is one of our committees, and then we have the public relations committee, which I'm the chairperson of, and then we have capital improvements, which Corey Gar is the chairperson of. Awesome. So what are some new, potentially exciting things to look forward to this next semester that uh, student senate's been working on currently? Sure. Um, we're talking about doing a rally for the basketball team, just one of the games that no one has sponsored yet. And we're kind of working on doing like a block party theme to it um, and maybe doing like um, just different prizes and stuff sponsored by Student Senate. Um, and then we're also, we also just passed an appropriation to get new benches for the side of campus and we're going to bring the old benches to the dorm side of campus. So that way there'll be some seating and things like that. Okay. And as far as involvement with other uh, organizations on campus, how do you guys go about taking part with um, someone like CAB or whomever to get these? Um... Sure. The great thing about Student Senate is that we are able to appropriate $1,000 to different RSOs, which is a registered student organization, or to non-RSO, such as like band or choir, and um, appropriate to them up to $1,000 per semester. So Student Senate can give any club or non-RSO up to $2,000 in an academic year. Um, it's a great way for us to support different clubs and get involved with them and also for Missouri Southern to get students out there to go to different tournaments and different, um, different things that we need to be involved in. Okay, great. So we have finals kind of rolling around. Mm -hmm. It's coming towards the end of the semester. You've um, had a few semesters full of finals where you've had to kind of prepare. So what are, what are some things that you've learned uh, through your just uh, just becoming a student and being you know in college for a little while that you could uh, maybe share with some underclassmen of, as far as how to prepare for sure. finals? Um, preparing for finals is difficult because a lot of times you don't know what, prof what the professor is going to do or what they expect or what it'll be like. So if you have a st if your teacher gives you a study guide, use it. Definitely, like just mull over it. Um, and a lot of times, if you you have a project or something as a final, just just go over it and go over it and go over it until you just know it like the back of your hand. Another thing that I think is important to do is divide the the um, your finals by according to which one is worth the most points and which one is um, going to be the most difficult. And study for the ones that are worth the most points and the ones that are most difficult first so that you have those down and the easy ones you can just not worry about. And lastly, um, during finals week uh, specifically, this, is student senate uh, specifically involved in any of kind of the activities like the pancake breakfast all night or things like that? Do you guys throw anything specifically or have any kind of um, say in those kind of events? We definitely try to support them as much as we can. Um, since it's, we try not to spend a lot of money on Student Senate ourselves, basically what we do is um, try to have like, small events. Like yesterday, we actually gave out um, hot apple cider and hot chocolate in um, the Lion's Den, just to kind of, um, it's kind of like an, a festive event, as well as getting people ready for finals and kind of take the stress off everyone. Great. Well, thank you, Mary, for coming thank out you. today. Thank you. And now we're going to go back to Dustin with the weather. I'm Dustin Doyle. I'm live here on Southern Campus. And my forecast for the weather is something went wrong. There's no sunshine today. It's a little wet, a little wetter than I like today. But we still got to go through with those finals. Uh, barometric pressure is 55 and falling. Precipitation is 100%. Uh, we got some weather coming in, so just stay live. Back to you guys in the newsroom. Hi, I'm Ryan Ferguson here with Southern Today. And to introduce this topic a little bit, for many students at this time of the year, it's a very hectic time. We have enrollment as well as concluding pl class projects and finals coming up soon. So in the studio today, we brought in a fifth year senior who's going to share some strategies and as well as some tactics to conquer finals week. So I'm Pleased to introduce Sarah Vogel. Nice to be here. Well, thank you for coming, Sarah. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I am a fifth year senior here. I will be graduating in May. Um, I enjoy pottery, and that's about it. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, tell me a little bit about your previous finals experiences being a fifth year senior. Well, being a fifth year senior, 
I have taken finals about four times now. And I've had a different strategy for each year. I've gone with the caffeine strategy where I, I, you know, instead of using cream and sugar for your coffee, I use Red Bull to sweeten my coffee just a little bit. So, you know, and it was kind of intermixed with like, you know, power napping. So you just take power naps every 15 minutes and then in between that you study. So I pretty much failed that semester. So the next year, I just ended up forgetting about finals. I had no idea if finals were even going on, and I, I just showed up and I took them, and everything ended up being fine, you know? So, and you know, I've had the good luck strategy. I, every year I wear the same pair of socks that I don't wear, you know, don't wash or anything like that. So, you know, I've got a lot of, got a lot of stuff going on. Hey, dress for success. That's right. And that is a motto. So overall, as far as your finals experiences, would you consider them positive or negative? I would express them as an experience. Not good, not bad, just, just finals. Just finals. Just finals. All right, well, now I want to, to transition for a moment, and we're going to talk a little bit about some commonly used survival strategies for maybe some new freshmen or people that are not as skilled with finals as you are. So I want to talk about the bite-sized pieces method, where we go class by class. How do you feel about that method of conquering finals week? You know, that's a pretty good strategy. I haven't really done that before. I think that's probably a pretty good decision. Um, I don't, I don't, uh, this year my, my strategy, well, my, a lot of my teachers aren't doing finals this year, so I pretty much just have one final pre to prepare for, so I should be good. And I'm thinking I'm just going to just go into it. And since I haven't missed class this semester, I think I'm just going to just spring into it and just not worry. But, you know, the bite-sized method, I, I hear it works for some people, but, you know, if you're, if you're just a wild person like me, you just don't want to do that. It's just okay. too much to handle. I understand. And so another thing that you've alluded to earlier in the conversation was the procrastination or cram method. Can yes. you elaborate on some experiences with that? Well, I'd say if you've, um, if you've paid enough attention in class, you'll be okay. That was kind of my motto. I ended up doing fine that semester too. I mean, all in all said I have passed all of my classes and I have done very well. But you know, the cram method, I prefer the cram method. It's just, you know, study for maybe like an hour before the test, and you're good. <laughs> study for an hour before the, I, I, that's interesting, interesting perspective. Yeah, it's all fresh on the mind. <laughs> <laughs> all right, another method I want to discuss with you is the jumbled method. And this is where you kind of study one class till you're bored, and then you transition to another, another class and study that one until you're bored. How do you feel about that method as far as studying um, class, or studying as, as much as you want, by how you feel, if that makes sense. Well, it's kind of like when you lose your homework and then you find it and then you can study it for about 15 minutes until you lose it again. So it's kind of like that. I, I don't suggest that. You don't suggest that method, no, okay. I don't suggest it. And another one, uh, as far as the last method that we'll discuss is one that you, you mentioned earlier, the caffeine method. Oh yes. How, discuss your experiences with that. Well, I didn't sleep for about five days. Um, I woke up in an alley and I, you know, all in all, I made it to my finals. You know, I was about two towns away whenever I woke up, and, um, you know, I was still pretty wide awake from my test. It's definitely an interesting perspective. Um, so, as far as, as far as all the methods that you've used, which strategy do you personally prefer the most? I like to just, just walk in, you know. Don't study, just walk in, see how it goes. Luck of rolling of the dice. Rolling of the dice. Okay. Um, and. For new students now, what, what are some things that you don't recommend doing for finals? I do not recommend studying. Just, just go in there and just, just make the luck happen. You know, and if you do well, then go to the casino that night. Just, just keep it going. Definitely, definitely interesting perspectives. <laughs> um, how do you feel about people that are combating stress? What are some good ways for, for new students to combat stress? More caffeine. More caffeine. <laughs> interesting. And how about procrastinating? How do, how do you feel as much on that one? You know, like I said, you know, it's, if you're going to procrastinate, why not just follow through and just not do it at all? You know? Well, thank you so much for, uh, for your input on everything. We're going to go back to Dustin now with the weather. Thank you.
Thank you, Dustin, for that weather report. Hell and damaging winds in Springfield. Folks, be safe out there. But as you've seen through the show, finals, week's it, finals week is coming up for current students. So I hope you students study and, you know, just focus in, have good, get good grades on your finals, and I wish you all the best. It's a lot of activities coming up, so don't have too much fun. And I know I want to go bounce on that bouncing machine myself. Man, I remember back when I had too much fun at the finals, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with that, Cliff. So, hey, Cliff, um, just a question. Yes. At the U of A, how did you study? Um, I actually didn't study, man. I actually memorized everything I did. I was actually very, very smart. How I ended up a broadcaster, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, me, you know, I, I tried studying, you know, a lot of procrastination as, you know, we had a female interview today. Lots of coffee. Lots right. and lots of coffee. Um, I drank maybe, estimate, eight Red Bulls a night. Wow. Yeah, the U of H, I took my time trying, trying to make it through, you know, nursing major was really kicking my butt. Yeah, it's a miracle you're still walking right now, man. <laughs> Same thing I said. <laughs> my mother gave me grief about that every day. But um, how do you think overall over your finals at school, how do you think you did? You know, you made it out pretty safe, you yeah, know. Yeah, I think degree. I did. did pretty fine, you know. Um, as Sarah said, I was feeling lucky. And, um, but I, I went to the casino and I lost a lot of money, but that's where I'm at right now. But um, I think that, you know, the students here have discovered a lot of skills that they should take home with them, make them be more successful for finals. And um, Well, this is Southern Today. Thank you, guys. I'm Cliff. Well, that's Cliff, and I'm Vincent. And you guys have a good day. We're out. Thanks, Dustin, for the weather update. Looks gorgeous outside. No, no, I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being stupid. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I had too much caffeine this morning. All right. The weather's going to be kind of a joke. Yeah, the weather's <laughs> What we're looking at is 55 on Monday. Uh, 5 to 10 mile an hour winds. Tuesday, about the same. 55. Temperature is 55. God dang it, guys. These are too <laughs> close. <laughs> I almost had it. Almost had it. Oh. Good morning and welcome to Southern Today. I'm Jazz Allen, to my left we have Clark Tanksley. We're finally just around the corner. We have a lot of um, incoming freshmen that are left wondering how to prepare. 
Uh, today we have brought in several. Damn it. You're looking at the wrong monitor. Where's the. I'm over here. Oh! Stare at him when you're talking. Gotcha. I was like, what kind of thing is that? You was doing here. Yeah, I had to. Where was you looking? Right here? Yeah, I was looking right there. I didn't know which one to look at. I don't know. Yeah, wait, that sounds good. I forgot about you. I was looking at this one. He started off very strong. <laughs> oh, you had a great intro and then just kind of... Yeah. <laughs> he says, don't worry, it will help. What? What? what the TV? Yeah, I was thinking the TV, too. I want to see how it looked. Yeah. You look good, man. You're nervous. No.